Welcome to this video on tonsillitis. Before we begin, consider the following questions. What are the tonsils and why might these get infected? How can you differentiate between bacterial and viral tonsillitis? Why does a peritonsillar abscess, or quinsy, develop? When would a patient be considered for tonsillectomy? And what is Lemier syndrome and how is this treated? The tonsils are a pair of lymphoid tissues situated at the back of the throat forming part of a wider complex of mucosa-associated lymphoid tissues known as Waldeyer's ring. This consists of the pharyngeal tonsil, known as the adenoid, the tubal tonsils situated close to the eustachian tube, the palatine tonsil, and the lingual tonsil. Collectively, these lymphoid tissues sample airborne and foodborne antigens, activating and proliferating B cells in response to pathogenic exposures. The palatine tonsils are situated between two pillars of muscle, the palatoglossus anteriorly and the palatopharyngeus posteriorly, and they attach to the lateral pharyngeal wall. In contrast to other structures of Waldeyer's ring, the palatine tonsils have deep branching crypts that can trap bacteria, food and debris, leading to biofilm formation and increased susceptibility to infection. Their anatomical position exposes them to both airborne and ingested pathogens, further contributing to their role in frequent infections. The majority of tonsillitis is viral, commonly caused by adenovirus, Coxsackie virus, and sometimes Epstein-Barr virus. Viral tonsillitis is usually self-limiting and requires supportive treatment alone. EBV-related tonsillitis, or glandular fever, can be more debilitating, resulting in severe fatigue and lethargy. Bacterial tonsillitis is most commonly caused by group A streptococcus, such as strep pyogenes or strep viridans, but can also be due to other bacteria such as Haemophilus influenzae and less commonly Fusobacterium necroforum, which is associated with Lemier syndrome. Tonsillitis results in pain and swelling, often limiting oral intake, fever and malaise, exudative tonsils in bacterial cases, and cervical lymphadenopathy. Severe cases can lead to dehydration, requiring hospital admission for intravenous fluids and antibiotics. Distinguishing between bacterial and viral tonsillitis is crucial, as antibiotics are ineffective for viral infections. The Centaur and Fever Pain Scoring Systems assist in this differentiation. With the Centaur score, the likelihood of bacterial tonsillitis is assessed using five criteria, each scoring one point for each positive criteria. These include an absent cough, exudative tonsils, tender anterior cervical lymph nodes, a temperature of over 38.0 degrees Celsius, and being either less than 15 years old, which adds a point, or being older than 44 years old, which reduces a point. A score of 4 to 5 suggests a high probability of bacterial infection, warranting immediate antibiotic treatment. In severe cases of bacterial tonsillitis, this may result in a peritonsillar phlegmon, evolving into a quinsy, which is a collection of pus between the tonsillar capsule and the lateral pharyngeal wall. This causes trismus due to medial pterygoid muscle irritation, uvular deviation away from the affected side, and unilateral throat pain. Treatment for a quinsy involves either needle aspiration or incision and drainage to evacuate the pus. It is essential to drain these abscesses as they may otherwise evolve into deeper neck space collections such as parapharyngeal or even retropharyngeal abscesses. In patients with recurrent tonsillitis, the benefits of removing the tonsils to prevent further infections must be balanced against the risks of surgery, in particular the 10% risk of postoperative bleeding, with some cases requiring surgical intervention to arrest the bleeding, along with postoperative pain often requiring strong analgesia. The paradise criteria can be used to inform the decision, with tonsillectomy recommended in patients who have seven or more episodes of tonsillitis in a single year, five or more episodes per year for two consecutive years, or three or more episodes per year for three consecutive years. Each episode should ideally be documented, requiring a healthcare professional's diagnosis and antibiotic treatment. Additional indications include recurrent peritonsillar abscesses, obstructive sleep apnea, particularly in children, 
or tonsillitis exacerbating systemic conditions such as rheumatic fever or IgA nephropathy. Lemier's disease is a rare but serious complication of bacterial tonsillitis, typically caused by Fusobacterium necrophorum. It is a form of septic thrombophlebitis of the internal jugular vein, leading to septic deposits being spread throughout the body, often affecting the lungs. This clinically presents with persistent fever despite treatment for tonsillitis, neck pain and swelling along the course of the internal jugular vein, signs of sepsis including tachycardia and hypertension, along with respiratory symptoms due to the septic pulmonary emboli. Once diagnosed, treatment includes intravenous antibiotics along with anticoagulation. I hope you found this video to be useful. I'd be grateful for your feedback in the comment section below and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.